In this set of videos, we're going to continue talking about valence bond theory, this idea of hybrid orbitals over orbital overlap to form bonds, um, and cover a couple of topics that we haven't hit yet. Um, so one topic that we haven't talked about yet is what happens for expanded octets. <clears throat> so we've talked about uh, combining S and P orbitals to make hybrid orbitals for tetrahedral geometries, for trigonal planar geometries, and for linear geometries. Uh, but we haven't talked about there's not enough orbitals uh, with just S and P orbitals to go beyond an octet. Uh, and so uh, the one of the ways that this is explained, uh, there are other ways to explain this, but we're going to go with this for, for us right now, is that we start to include D orbitals mixing in with these uh, uh, S and P orbitals. And this helps to explain why it needs to be atoms in the third uh, row and beyond uh, of the periodic table and why uh, atoms in the second row cannot expand their octets because they can't form these hybrid orbitals. So this is a pictorial representation and the basic idea is we're still going to have the same molecular geometries, electron pair geometries that we learned with Vesper theory. So we're still going to have a trigonal bipyramidal if we have five uh, electron pairs around our central atom. So we still have that same structure right here. And to explain how we get this structure, even though this is not the shape of p orbitals and s orbitals, we combine, as listed here, an s orbital, three p orbital, or three p orbitals, and a d orbital. So we make five sp three d orbitals. So this is expanding from just our sp sp two sp three to sp three d. Uh, and so that the when we combine these orbitals, adding in the d orbitals, we get five hybrid orbitals that point along the directions of the trigonal bipyramidal geometry. So we'll get one orbital pointing up and down along the axial positions, and then three orbitals at 120 degrees around the equatorial positions here. And that's the basic idea. We can do the same thing, add two d orbitals, and get an octahedral geometry. Uh, this more closely matches the p orbitals, but remember the p orbitals are a single orbital with two lobes, so they can't really form a bond on either side. And so instead we have um, separate sp3d2 again and then we've added another d orbital here we make six sp3d2 orbitals that form along the octahedral geometry so if we see uh, elements that exhibit uh, expanded octets and have either of these geometries either the trigonal bipyramidal um, electron pair geometry or the octahedral electron pair geometry uh, so they may have other molecular geometries, right? We may have the seesaw or the T-shaped or the um, square planar, square pyramidal structures. Um, they're still going to have these hybrid orbitals present in those structures. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, so if we look at, say, something like, if we're asked, like, what's the hi what, what hybrid orbitals are present in, I don't know, something like... Uh, SF6, a molecule we've looked at, sulfur hexafluoride. Um, we know that this, according to Vesper theory, makes an octahedral geometry. So we have our six fluorine atoms arranged at 90 degrees to everything else, octahedral geometry, and therefore this will have an sp3, sp3d2 hybrid orbitals. And it's the overlap between those hybrid orbitals and the orbitals on our fluorine atoms that make our bonds. Now all these are going to be sigma bonds uh, because we have no double bonds in this structure. So we have six sigma bonds between our sulfur and fluorine. Uh, the same thing would apply if we had a something with a, a tetrahedral, uh, not tetrahedral, with a trigonal bipyramidal uh, electron pair geometry. So I pick something without lone pairs, let's do something with lone pairs now. So let's think about something like um, uh, I've always got to come up with some specific ones. SF4. <clears throat> or I like doing a little tellurium. Uh, what is it? TF4. Oh, we'll do S S SCL4. So sulfur tetrachloride. All right. If we draw the uh, if we draw the Lewis structure here, what we should see is that we end up with four chlorines bonded. I'll draw the dots instead of dashes this time. You can double check my work here, but this should give us this 
which translates into a trigonal bipyramidal, right? We have five, SN equals five for this. So we're gonna have, again, our axial position is gonna be where one of our lone pairs is. Sorry, not fluorine, chlorine. Our equatorial, uh, sorry, our axial position will not have the lone pair. The lone pair goes in the equatorial position, the axial positions will be filled by chlorines and the other two equatorial positions by chlorines. So this is our seesaw uh, molecular geometry and the orbital hybridization here is sp3d because the electron pair geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. So one of our hybrid orbitals is here where this lone pair is and the rest of them are part of sigma bonds between the sulfur and chlorine. Right, so that's, that's, we're not going to go any deeper than that with the uh, expanded octet. So the basic idea is if we have an expanded octet, we need to start including d orbitals and coming back up to our pictures up here. These d orbitals will be included and that will lead to the structures that we already know, the, the geometry we already know. Trigonal bipyramidal, if we have five electron domains or five uh, electron pairs around our central atom, um, and, the and those hybrid orbitals will point to, uh, on those same directions that we've seen before. And then with the octahedral geometry, if we have uh, six electron pairs, um, and that would be an sp3d2. We need to include two d orbitals to get this to work. All right, your textbook presents a different um, way of looking at this. We're going to stick with this. If I ask you questions on an exam or something, this is the explanation I would expect you to give. Um, so, uh, yeah. Then the next video, we're going to look at one more thing with uh, valence bond theory, which is how do we think about resonance structures and, and what's going on there.